Dobrý den všem. Good afternoon to all of you. My first part will be more theoretically uh, theoretical, so I will get to the slides later. The 21st century brings new challenges uh, in the protection of heritage. The range of protected buildings and territories is significantly expanded, and uh, there are also new requirements in their use and maintenance. This increases the demands on all participating professions, conservationists, investors, architects. The aim of heritage conservation must be not only to preserve cultural assets for future generations, but also to present them to contemporary society with ever-increasing demands for comfort and service, which is only possible through dialogue with all stakeholder groups, including investors, architects, and users. This places ever-increasing demands on conservation staff who must undertake professional training in the fields of conservation, architecture, art history, but also technology and soft skills, such as communication. Significant interventions in heritage conservation are always marked by a clash between the conservative perception, uh, often shown by heritage staff, and the often progressive approach of the designers and architects. The current approaches of the National Heritage Institute use the principle of advisory bodies, emphasizing a multidisciplinary team based on the expertise of the different members. In addition to conservationists and uh, architecture and art history theoreticians, representation of design architects is important. This brings broader perspectives to decision-making of the collective bodies and can provide a counterpoint for the investor and the architect, as well as uh, is key for good cooperation throughout the inception uh, of the project and the construction period. Uh, three vertices of an imaginary triangle must find common ground here. There is the owner, investor, the conservationists, and the architects. Without mutual dialogue and understanding, as well as qualified opposition, you cannot expect a quality result that would satisfy everyone involved. Users are often neglected in the preparation of a restoration, unless they are the same as the investor. This can be detrimental to the resulting project, if, especially if it is intended to serve the general public. In public projects, it is therefore advisable to involve a selected group of users at some stage. Monuments target specific user groups, children, people with disabilities, the elderly, and others. In this situation, the triangle turns into a square. It could be said that the result of a dialogue between the investor, the conversation, conservationist, and the architect is a social contract taking into account the public interest in protecting heritage. This must be respected by the architect, inserting new structures and elements. Uh, also, uh, the needs of the investor in terms of the appropriate use of the building while preserving its heritage values must be taken into account. Heritage conservation has the task to clearly define these heritage values. How to define them? If the conservation is the architect and the investor want to achieve a successful result, avoiding surprises during implementation, uh, good pre-design preparations are essential. There should be a structural and historical survey of the building, restoration surveys, diagnostics of the building structure, archaeological survey preferably carried out uh, using non-invasive methods. There should also be a clearly defined proposal for the use of the reconstructed building and the needs based on this. These inputs will facilitate the dialogue between all stakeholders. Above all, the social contract between all those involved must reflect the principles of quality conservation. Yesterday, the founders of Central European Heritage Care, two uh, were remembered here, Alois Rieger and, uh, and uh, Dvořák, who defined what we need to look at when looking after heritage. If you look at uh, uh, 
uh, other public publications, you will see that in 2009, John H. Stubbs, in his uh, book Time Honored, defined uh, the Rieger Dvořák uh, uh, tradition in which this tradition is reflected. A precise definition of values, preservation of those values when working with the heritage site, minimum loss of mass during interventions, exclusion of uh, fantasies, uh, careful with new interventions, etc. The approaches to listed buildings uh, in the last three decades will be presented uh, by my talk. Neither of them could have been successful and positively received by the professional and lay public without a good understanding of the bu buildings and the emphasis on the pre-project uh, preparation. The Helfstein Castle ruins uh, be belongs to the largest medieval castle complexes in Moravia. It is located on a hill above the Bečva River. Uh, it's an important historical monument and also a distinctive landscape landmark. Unmistakable. Its current appearance dates back to the early 19th century. This is a uh, um, drawing from 1727, where you can still see the castle palace uh, uh, top right with roofing. Uh, the uh, castle lost its roof uh, shortly after that. And already since the 19th century, the beginning of the 19th century, the silhouette of the castle is uh, known without uh, the roof and uh, the, the framework structure, so a torso only. Uh, since the middle of the 19th century, work uh, has been underway in the castle grounds to turn the neglected monument into a tourist attraction. However, uh, the past palace was never equipped with a new roof. In 1915, Science and Arts issued an opinion which said, in view of the fact that the existing conservation work is totally inadequate for the future cultural use, it will be necessary to implement a general rehabilitation plan in stages. The basic idea of which is to roof all the preserved parts of the castle and to secure them structurally so that the essence of the monument does not suffer from the weather and the interior can be properly used for cultural purposes. On this slide, you can see aerial views of the castle from that period, from the 1950s. This position became the starting point for the work of architect Zdeněk Gardavský, who spent the majority of his uh, professional life at Helfstein. He formulated his opinion, saying that the rapid decay of walls and masonry with mortar continuously washed away by acid rains today allows only two solutions, restoration or undisturbed uh, decay. The previously applied concept of conservation is no longer feasible in masonry with completely washed out lime from a loose loamy sand mortar mixture on which stones lie loose and between which vegetation roots creep. Although architect Gardavsky uh, designed the roofing for the palace, it was never implemented during his lifetime, and the problem of securing the palace uh, was brought into the 21st century. In 2010, the collective advisory body of the director of the National Heritage Institute, uh, Olomouc Center, adopted six uh, basic points for maintaining Helfstein Castle, and especially the palace. I would highlight two points here. A recommendation to roof the castle palace so that the castle silhouette is not disturbed. And secondly, to give preference to a technicist solution rather than a historicizing one. If you remember the points I quoted here, both these decisions are based on these points. In the following years, works on the pre-project design were carried out among other things, diverse uh, 
tenders before uh, implementation took place. These are several designs which appeared in the uh, competitions but were never implemented. In 2015, the Olomouc Architectural Studio Atelier R uh, was made responsible of this. The project was uh, done by Miroslav Pospisil and Martin Karlik in the years 2015 to 2016, implemented in 2017 to 2020. Uh, the project got the Czech Architectural Award for 2021. And the authors say, in addition to fulfilling the technical program of the reconstruction, including the strengthening of the damaged structures and the restoration of the preserved elements, we wanted to complement the historical building with contemporary architecture, with utilitary and aesthetic function. Our aim was to bring visitors closer to the historical development of the original Renaissance palace. We inserted the construction of a new tour route into the existing openings of the palace torso, connecting the ground floor with the previously inaccessible levels of the building. The new elements uh, in a contemporary design are clearly differentiated from the historical structure. We worked with three basic materials, with a different one predominating in each layer. For the roofing, glass roofs on steel beams were chosen. The construction of staircases and foot bridges uh, were designed with corten. On the ground floor of the palace, the route uh, runs along polished concrete walkways. The entire reconstruction process was based on respect for the historical building and the desire to preserve its character. An attractive sightseeing route was created in the castle palace. It allows visitors to learn about the history of the palace, its construction, and also provides new viewpoints uh, at the levels of the original ceilings, walls and roof, and also the landscape around the castle. This is a symbiosis of history and uh, the present. A modern architectural ensemble. You can see it on these slides. The colors show the new elements that were introduced in the uh, palace building. If you look at the layouts, you might think that too much was inserted. Perhaps you should perhaps look at the cross sections where you can tell that there are not so many uh, contemporary elements in the end. And the essence of this uh, monument, the palace itself, was preserved. So the visitors can perceive it uh, in a different perspective than in the past. The implementation respects the STAPS principle of differentiating new elements. This solution allows the visitor, even one that uh, doesn't have knowledge of architectural history, to clearly uh, discern the historic masonry and the modern elements. The characteristic silhouette of the castle rooms has also been preserved. The castle's administration um, gets daily feedback from visitors, which are predominantly positive. I will be showing a couple of examples from uh, this country and also from abroad. Uh, similarly, as in the case of Helfstein Castle, torsos were provided with roofs. I will not comment on that. I will leave that to your own consideration. Uh, here you can also read the text. These are examples uh, from Western Europe, uh, from Italy, Austria, uh, the Netherlands. Uh, there was also one Czech example, a uh, church in Neratov. Uh, another heritage site I would like to talk about is the Liberet Spa, named after uh, Franz Josef I, designed by the Viennese architect Peter Paul Brang in 1899 to 1902. The building combines elements of the fading eclecticism of the 19th century with Art Nouveau. The spa in Liberec served primarily a public hygiene function because at that time households did not have bathrooms. So apart uh, 
of uh, the spa was uh, baths, uh, first to third class, Roman, Irish, uh, steam baths, shower washrooms, uh, carbonic baths, restrooms, and uh, the other facilities. There was even a swimming pool, uh, 20 by 10 meters. Until the opening of a new swimming pool in 1984 in Liberec, just a couple of hundred meters away, the spa was the only indoor pool in the city of Liberec. This was reflected in the number of visitors. In the first 25 years of operation alone, it reached more than 2.5 million. Since 1984, however, the spa gradually fell into disrepair. The pool was uh, used for schools, for school kids, but since uh, it got deteriorated, the spa was then closed completely. After 1990, the spa changed its owner several times, and only in 2005, uh, it was purchased by the city of Liberec for 9 million Czech crowns, and uh, rescue works started. In 2009, an agreement was concluded between the city, the Liberec region, and the Liberec Regional Gallery on the future use of the spa for gallery purposes. The project for revitalization was prepared by the Liberec Studio Cial under the direction of Chief Architect Jiří Buček and Chief Engineer Karel Novotny in 2009-2010. Construction work started in September 2011, completed in June 2013. Prior to starting design work, pre-preparation and minor um, restoration works were carried out, especially concerning the main facade, a historical survey and inventory of the art and crafts elements was made and diagnostics of the structures was carried out due to their long-term disuse. Detailed discussions were held on partial changes to the layout. This included demolition of the pool, removal of the former bathrooms, uh, which were already devoid of equipment, and adding a modern depository in the so-called uh, Garden City, emerging at the turn of the 19th and 20th centuries. After repeated interventions by the National Heritage Institute, the proposed demolition of the chimney of the former boiler house, which is an interesting technical landmark, was abandoned. The demolition of the pool and the implementation of a lighted floor created a second monumental exhibition hall in the basement. However, in the floor outline, a reminder of the pool bath was retained. The monumental exhibition halls uh, thus complement the more intimate exhibition spaces, the library, educational spaces, and visitor facilities, including a cafe. As a result of this, uh, Liberec has a gallery uh, fitting the trends of the 21st century, including access for people with disabilities, retaining, however, the distinctive elements of the original spa building concept. The approach of the CL studio was um, awarded uh, the Grand Prix of the Architects Association for 2013. Uh, I quote, the very essence of the layout is based on the blending and contrast of the old and the new. Everything that is historically essential forms the framework that absorbs the new. The contrast between the historical substance and the contemporary furnishings is part of working with the monument. The conversion of the neo-Renaissance baths includes spaces for permanent and changing exhibitions of the regional gallery in Liberec. The pool space uh, is vacated. The original pool bath at ground floor level is covered by a sandblasted glass floor on steel structure. This allows secondary lighting at courtyard level. The exhibition space in the refurbished Municipal Baths building is complemented by a new depository building on Masaryk Street. If you look at uh, both uh, projects closely, you will see several common features. First and foremost, the quality of the preparation works involving the National Heritage Institute, specialized firms and a group of architects supported by other professionals, such as structural engineers. 
the modern elements uh, were the result of a dialogue between conservationists, architects, and the investor. Uh, these are not a distraction to the perception of the historical essence of the two buildings. They are rather a suitable complement aesthetically and functionally. I would like to thank you all for your attention and also I would like to thank my colleagues from providing me the documentation concerning the Helstein Castle without which I couldn't prepare my talk. Thank you.